You guys still use Groupon? Uh, no. I haven't used Groupon nor gotten an email from Groupon probably in eight years. I think my mom still does. Really? Yeah, like once, like, you know, twice a year, I'll go over to her house and she'll hand me a Groupon for some restaurant. Groupon's a scam, right? Because you end no. up spending money Whoa. that you wouldn't have spent because you're like, oh, I'm getting a deal on this. But then it's like you wouldn't have spent the money in the first place if you didn't know there was a deal. What? What do you mean? Doesn't you have to Groupon, buy someone a gift. Yeah. The way Groupon works is you, like, pay 40 bucks and now I have $80 worth of money I can use at a restaurant. I yeah, thought that's, that's how great. it works. But I, if every time I get an oil change, I go to Groupon. Oh, yeah. Jiffy oh. Lube. Oh, if you pay full price for Jiffy Lube oil changes, you're an idiot. I could. My mind could be changed. I just feel like my experience with Groupon was like you go on Groupon and it's like this massage at this salon oh, is fifty yeah. percent off, and so then I spend like yeah. hundred fifty dollars on something that I probably would have spent zero dollars yeah. on if I didn't see oh, it on sure. sale. I get them as gifts, like massages. Yeah, yeah discounted. I was only. I bring this up. I know you're wondering, Dan. Why I was did just going to ask. Yeah. Why do you ask, Billy? It's a good question. Good little Dan. conversation. Yeah, this is why I was thinking about it because I was at Brandsmart the other day and I was thinking of Tony because it was a Brandsmart right by where Tony lives, and I was going to call Tony or text Tony, and be like, "Hey, you want to go to Brandsmart with me?" But then I thought, I this is short notice. He might be moving soon. I don't know if today's the day that he's moving, so let me You don't not, want to get roped know. into, like, helping him move. Oh, hell no, no. I'm not going to help Tony move now. So I was, I was going to Brandsmart. I was been, thinking, been there, by the way. Yeah. I was thinking of Tony for two reasons. One is because it was right by where Tony lived. And two, Tony, Tony's been talking about wanting to get an electric scooter, and I saw some of them. So I yeah. wanted to take a picture and send him the prices of these electric scooters. You know what I mean? Chris, what did you say that made Jessica laugh like that? Well, I sh we helped Jess move when she moved really? uh, a few months back. Well, I yeah, so I had to move Billy. twice I when I got to my Billy. Billy. I did. You were on. I think you were on paternity leave. Oh, okay, I, okay. I asked everyone to help me because you're I welcome. Had, by the way, I, I have another kid to I not was, help. I was <laughs> in. I was in such a pickle, Dan, because I had a horrible experience with my oh, first yeah. apartment when I moved and I needed to move out and I needed to not spend any money because I was like deep in the hole and so I asked all of the guys I was like hey do you guys mind like I I don't have a car right now like I need to get stuff from point A to point B it's gonna cost hundreds of dollars to rent a car and parking and everything and like carrying all this shit like around and whatever and I think my boyfriend was like in Tokyo or something yeah. for the Olympics it was a disaster wow. so they all agreed Lewis it was like his first week of work Tony, Chris, and Whittingham. And what I said that made her laugh, but I was basically like, that was our honeymoon phase. Yeah, like, they would if, not if do that. If you asked me they now, I'd be now. like, eh, sorry, I got plans. But it's like, you know, you're working with somebody for like two months. You're like, oh, sure, I'll they help you. They all felt bad for me, though. They all pitied yeah. me, except Lewis, who walked into my apartment and goes, how much does this cost? <laughs> I was like, I met you yesterday. That's what he's good at. Yes, mm -hmm. this is one of Lewis's many gifts. Uh, why? What is it that uh, that your strategy is? I want to get back to the Groupon situation, but you have a strategy as it relates, Jessica, to whether or not you wave at cruise ships. This is oh my of, god! Do you guys wave you at cruise to, ships? You have to. You, you, have to. you, you wave at you them, have right? To. Like, when I'm on okay, yes. They're leaving. So, no, Tony, Tony, when you, wait, they're leaving. Yeah, you're on the ground. Okay, so like you guys know, like South Point Pier, right? Oh, yeah. South Point Pier is Lovely. like w one of the most beautiful places in Miami. Wow. But don't go there because it's already really crowded all the time. Oh. So just kidding. But anyways, last night, Dan, there was a, th all the cruise ships go out at like 5 p.m. Yeah. and like it's like a parade of cruise ships and they're all blowing the horns like, Brr! and there's all these people outside because it's like. It really yeah, does. Like sound, it sounds like an old, an old <laughs> truck. Yeah, I thought it was more like. <laughs> oh my god, that's that was a good really one. good. That's that's a good. good one. That was good. Wow. That's a good one. Wait, do it again. Do it again. Limited fake cruise ship horn. Mm, oh, yeah. Really <laughs> good. Yeah, really I'm good. waving to you. I'm waving. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So there's all these people out at South Point Pier, like at the Smith and Walensky, where all it's the cats a soulful, are. It's a soulful mm, horn. Yes. It's yeah. also uh, yes. <laughs> the fake lighthouse. Anyways, so the cruise ships go by. Dan, Dan, okay, I always thought I was weird for waving at the cruise ships because I always wave and like my if I'm like with a small group, my friends are like, you're so weird. I'm like, but the people wave back. And it's like, don't oh, wave, wave back. Don't but wave. last night, this cruise ship goes by. It was like a party at South Point Pier. Everyone started waving and then everyone so started great. cheering. I felt like I was in Liverpool watching the Titanic set sail, it. only hopefully there's a happy ending there. Oh, wow. It okay. was amazing. It was like, everyone was like, yeah. And then the people on the cruise ship were like, it's a real human it connection. Was a, it was yeah. so exciting. And then I was like, I I'm never going to not wave at a cruise ship ever again. It just made everyone's day. How about boat. smaller boats? Do you also wave at smaller boats? No. Do you? Because no. you don't wave, you just put the hand up. If you're on a boat, yeah. you wave at yeah. the other boat. Right, right now, the, the song is like, na 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 na
So true. <laughs> Yachts? Is there a is there a size of boat that you are? Uh, if people are waving to you from a yacht, never been on a yacht. I mean, where's the I've cutoff? Never been on a yacht. Where's the cutoff between a big boat and a yacht? Like, what's mm. the footage? I think Ooh. it's more of the Yachts design than the finger. than the footage. Oh, another thing that happened, Dan. This big cruise ship was going by, and it was the Symphony of the Seas. Oh, wow. And this guy goes. Oh, that's the biggest cruise ship in the world. And I was like, oh, my God. I, like and I was like, that's I was like with my sister. I was like, that's the biggest cruise ship in the world. And then we were like kept walking. I was like, I wonder if that's really the biggest cruise ship in the world. So I Googled it. It's not. It's four feet shorter than the actual biggest cruise because ship in the world. Because there's been another one since then. That yes. been, they're, all, they're always yes. trying to top each other by four feet. They well, should just build the slide out four feet. Like, you know, the slide on the back of the cruise uh, ship. They should just make that extend four feet. Or five feet, actually. And then they'll actually be the longest boat in the world. I think to be a yacht, you have to be 35, 35 feet no, long. No, it's got to be right? bigger than that. That can't be right. 35 is pretty big, yacht, though. Yeah, but it's not a yacht. A yacht. 35-foot boat is a nice boat, but it's I'm not telling a you there's yacht. No, I'm telling you We're there's no... We're all typing in minimum size for yacht no right now. There's no standard definition, but it looks like 35 feet. But is, also, you could have a 35-foot boat that's not a yacht, meters. right? So it's it's like also I the, I, the design I think, of it. I think that yachts, almost by definition, have to be more than thirty five feet. I'm it, seeing I'm seeing the internet telling me anything over forty feet could be huh. conceivably considered a yacht. I see. If you own a luxury craft less than twelve meters long, it's usually called a cabin cruiser. A super yacht is usually more than twenty four meters long. Meters though, so multiply meters. by three. Yes, yeah. that's good. That's not surprising, that's Billy, we'll that you would do that. something that would muddle it. Well, with twelve a, meters. It's 36, 36 feet. if Carry you multiply the one. by three. Yeah. Mm. We should hmm. get a Metal Arc yacht. Yeah. Am I, am I we were talking about that earlier. Oh, what kind of watercraft we what? should have. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, the, the Y wasn't silent in yacht? <laughs> no. I just had a stroke midway through that word. That's it. <laughs> you lost confidence. You, you like, never, yacht. You've, yacht. <laughs> you've never <laughs> lost confidence that quickly in one of those. <laughs> it sounded instead like you had a I come here, man. seizure of some sort. Miat. If you had to do it over again. <laughs> <laughs> you were doing so well just keep it with the cruise ship. You were doing so well. Stugats, did you see? Uh, so do you guys wave or not? You guys don't wave at cruise ships? <laughs> no, I always do. You I, have to. I try to whistle too, but it's, oh, you know, like no. the loud whistle. This is as loud as I can whistle though. And they can't That's hear that from Why do you do that? Because oh, yeah. I want to do one of those really loud whistles. But you don't know how. Where you like put your fingers in your mouth? Yeah. I know. Oh my God. Yeah, I've always that? wanted to do it. Nah. Can't can do anyone it. do that? Wait, we can do it. Try it. Buck Show Walter. <laughs> 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 Who in sports? You're right. Who in sports? Because Joe, Joe Girardi can definitely do that. There's a certain type. Who is the person most, all of sports, that looks like they could just stick two fingers in their mouth and whistle a hundred yards away for something to come from far away because they need to get its attention. Mike Tomlin. Oh, no, no, I don't I think, think so. He, can. he does not whistle. I don't think he knows how to whistle. He's frustrated by it. I was going to say Tony LaRusa. You don't think admitted. Mike Tomlin knows how to whistle? I do not. I not just like think that. he always has a real whistle, yeah, so he never needs he to. He whistles do that. out right. of the side of his mouth, though, not the front of it. Like, this he doesn't is a different really type like of whistling, chill. Billy. Like, it's huh. two fingers in the mouth, and you can hear it from miles away. Like Buck Showalter. Is it just old timey baseball managers? Is yeah. that is that all we're going to select? I can see here? Brian Billick for some reason being able to do it. I don't know why. I don't think I don't Buck can do it. Dabo Swinney's a good one. Dabo. Every college football coach can whistle, right? Jimbo, especially defensive coordinators. This is Jimbo whistling. That is not Jimbo whistling. That's Jimbo farting like he's in, in a room. gourmet restaurant. That's what that was. I would say strength and conditioning coaches are probably the people in, in American football that are most likely to be able to capture attention with their with their. The fingers. strength coaches can do it without the fingers. Yeah, I've got that more like with just hubba, their hubba. tongue, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying I can't do it, so that's why it sounded terrible. But yeah. you thanks get for it. the clarification on American football. Yeah. By the way. Why? Why? I was thanking you. I do think the position per square foot, I think you've got it correct, that the position of a college football strength coach is the one most likely to be able to just stick two fingers in their mouth and summon a dog from a long way away by whistling extra loud. Like Dan Campbell? Dan Campbell would probably, oh, he's got to be excellent at it, right? I imagine he just goes, ah! 
Ah! Yeah, yeah. It's like a, just, he just a like crazed shouts like roar. a bear, just like like something howling at the moon or like the, the cruise noise. <laughs> Stu Gods, did you see uh, Baron Davis and Kyrie Irving's? Did we finish the group on conversation? No, is we the, didn't. Is the group on conversation finished? Sure. <laughs> Conflicting reports. I mean. Did you get to the bottom of whatever it is that you were trying well, to do? I was just wondering because Tony was looking for a scooter, and I said, you know what? This is probably something that they have on oh, Groupon. Yeah. So at, at a point in time, my a brain was scooter? conditioned. A scooter on Groupon? Yeah, an electric scooter. I bet you they have it. I'm on Groupon right now. I'll tell you right now. My brain was always conditioned. Let me go to Groupon first to see if they have this or not. And that, it just has check, been reprogrammed. Check. Ooh, Everglades check. Safari Park. Did you feel shame of some sort when you throw, threw out to the group, Billy? Boom. Do you guys still Multiple use? Multiple electric scooters. Which do you guys still use Groupon? Were you asking because it you thought it was a thing that had gone by the wayside, that was extinct, that you were one of the few still using it? No, I, I haven't used it, and I felt bad about it. It's like finding out this is a friend that you haven't seen for a long time, and then you start to think about it, and you're like, oh, wow, it's been like six years since I've actually seen and hung out with this person. That's how I felt about Groupon. You guys don't do that? Isn't it sad? That everything that you haven't done in a while, there was a time that you did it for the last time and you didn't realize yeah. that that was what you were doing. <laughs> yeah. Like playing in the yard with your yeah. cousins or Like working at ESPN. Yeah. Never, well, that one I knew that was oh, my yeah. last day. They were pretty clear about that. <laughs> <laughs> there was an absence of confusion on that one. They were I clear, didn't know. They were clear months before. You didn't know. You're the one who did not know. <laughs> Nobody told you it was Chris your Chris worked last there day. longer than the rest of us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he did. That was a fairly amazing trick. Don't ever answer your phone end. at 2 p.m. on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous game. <laughs> Did you guys uh, see the story where Kyrie Irvin and Baron Davis were talking about uh, or were asked about whether any of the and one streetball players could play in the NBA, Stugatz? Because, uh, you know, Rafer Alston uh, rather famously made it from Skip to My Loop, showboater to guy or mixtapes to guy who could play in the NBA. Did you hear Baron Davis and Kyrie Irving's reaction to this? No. Howling laughter. Really? Howling laughter <laughs> saying the guy who's nicknamed Hot Sauce came and played with some NBA guys and he was just catch up at the end. <laughs> like there was nothing. There was <laughs> they just just howling with laughter at the idea of like no, you can't just not take care of your body and dribble past Jason Tatum. I mean, Andre Drummond's kind of doing it. I mean, he's not taking care of his body. He's still playing in the NBA. There are plenty of guys who don't take care of their body and play in the NBA. Well, I'm not sure that Andre, Andre Drummond. I'm not. I don't know why you chose him when well, I'm chubby, talking about well, and and one type of street ball. No, players. but they're making the point like, hey, you can't just stroll into the NBA. And I'm saying, uh, once in a while, a guy could kind of just stroll into the NBA, like Jeremy Lin. Uh, he did. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. That's it. I don't know what you're saying. Uh, they're making it a lot harder than it appears. That's all I'm saying. You think it's easy to get to the NBA? I just, think certain. Just to be clear. I, I think some of those guys could make it to the NBA. I do. Well, why haven't they? I don't know. They don't want the giant amounts of money and fame. Politics, then. I mean, come on. It's who you know. You know, not what you know. It's Trump's fault. <laughs> I mean, you don't think any of them could make the NBA? Not a single guy. I mean, no, not a single one. Twelfth guy on the bench. Nope. I mean, none, really? of, none of them. Kyrie says so. None of them. Not just because because none of them are in the NBA, and they all want to be. That That's the part that gives it away. It's not that Kyrie says so. It's not that Barron says so. It's that if they uh, could get to the NBA, they would not be playing in Lexington, Kentucky, in a gym with a 1,000 people in it because they prefer that, the charm of it, and the bus rides to the NBA. Did Austin Rivers get in there? That what? I think Austin Rivers got in there because his dad was Doc. Oh. Nepotism. I think Austin Rivers got in there because he went to Duke and was a top college basketball recruit. I, Zoran Dragic. It's who, who you, you know. know. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. To well, I think you can make an argument that Thanasis Antetokounmpo, you know, <laughs> there's, a, there's a who you know Put it on the there. poll at Levitard Show. Uh, can you make an argument that the NBA Thanasis Antetokounmpo, you know? Uh, you know. <laughs> Ryan Clark said that Chris Brown is more talented than Michael Jackson. What is that about? How can you say that? How can you say? That's the second most offensive thing that's been said earlier this week on the show. 
Billy compared Babe Ruth to Justin Bohr. That is far worse. I apologize worse. to Justin Bohr for that. <laughs> Justin I Bohr? said that I shouldn't have said that. Okay. I went a step further and said Babe Ruth would be terrible today. Yeah, we're, I mean, look, I, I don't want to... We're a team here. I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. I don't want to say anything, but like... I, I have my regrets saying that Babe Ruth would be terrible today and that he'd be Justin Bohr because I didn't intend to insult Justin Bohr and say that he was terrible. I love Justin Bohr. Wait, I'll never forget the home run derby where he was eating donuts during the home I run derby. I thought he was, was going to win that. Moment. It's as excited as I've it ever been so, in that ballpark. The energy in that ballpark, it was crazy. First, we all wanted Stanton, and then he took a fart. Yeah, well, yeah. Took the, a shit. Well, yeah. Took a took fart, a fart Dan. Yeah, Took something. Let's not get bogged down. You know what I meant. Yeah, exactly. No, Santa, in, in the home run derby, I, I remember being palpably moved. It took a record performance from Aaron Judge to knock out the great Justin Bohr, oh. who, who was like a keg softball player up there, one of my favorite Marlins players of all time. The Bordabello Crush Room. Exactly right. Yeah. But here's here's the thing. I'm Nailed it. I'm worried about it for a number of reasons, one of which is I feel like Justin Bohr might see that and like get insulted, and I didn't intend that. And this apology and that previous apology won't be out there. So he's just going to kind of take it as like an insult, and that's not the case. He I would didn't be mean insulted. Insult you think he'd be insulted to be compared to Babe Ruth? No. I think the insulting part was when I said Babe Ruth would be terrible today. He'd be, And then I said he'd be like Justin Bohr making it seem like I think Justin Bohr's terrible, which is not the case. I think Justin Bohr would be better than Babe Ruth today, honestly. But just, back to Chris Brown. Just a quick update, though, on Walter Johnson's velocity. Okay. okay. He was throwing so, 91 miles per hour. No. Uh, he From was. From the Howard, Con Howard Bryant conversation yesterday? Yes. I know. I, th that, those are, you know. Yeah, we're doing this thing with Babe Ruth. Different I'm telling you, radars he he back then. He faced 91 miles per hour. That's all no, I'm saying. No, I don't think so, Tim. I think that's one of those things where it's just I like people him. see it and they think like, oh, that's so fast. How fast was it? Oh, that must have been 91 miles an hour. That's Faster than a Model T could run these days. You know what I mean? Like, must have been 91. Put it, Guillermo, put it on the poll. Did they know how to measure miles per hour back when Walter Johnson was throwing heat? I don't think they did. I also, and, and this is this is quite controversial, I don't think that they accurately measured the length of the walls in the outfield either. Like, I don't buy these 500-foot walls. I just don't. I think it's impossible. And I don't think that it was possible for someone to be throwing a ball, like, 72 miles an hour, and then they hit the baseball, and it's basically like a bunch of socks with duct tape around it and have that ball at that slow velocity then go 8,000 feet you're, you're, over a wall. You're saying that the legendary Mickey Mantle home runs probably aren't actually further uh, cans of than, corn, Aaron, you know what I mean? than, yeah. than Aaron Judge and John Carlos Stanton. Not even warning baseball. track power. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Catching up with Justin Bohr, in 2021, he hit 170 for the LG Twins of the Korean Baseball League. I am Babe going Ruth hit 120. to double down on yeah. Justin Bohr being one of my favorite Marlins ever. He was just cut by Diablos Rojos of the Mexican League. While we're reliving yesterday's show, I just want to let you know, Dan, my dad did not leave here happy yesterday. Why? He, he, we, he likes us to get a plug for the Greg Cody show in, and we had to remind him that it didn't happen, and when we did, not happy. Mm. He left here pissed. He, no, the, the funny part about it is he was happy. He was doing finger guns to everybody. Hey, good show, everyone. And then we remind, oh, and then Dan just very, cat. oh, we forgot to do a Greg Cody show plug, and his mood instantly changed. Right. Well, he had four hours. I mean. He mentioned the Herald in an article he wrote. He, he did. Uh, this is the thing with Greg Cody, and I don't know if you guys want to call him and, and ask apology or what, but Greg Cody comes in here, and he does the show in exchange for the plugging of his podcast. That is why he's doing it. And the applause. He, he left here, okay, enraged yesterday. It felt like cartoon steam out his ears. It felt like a four-year-old toddler throwing a temper tantrum because we had not promoted properly the Greg Cody show featuring Greg Cody. So have you called him there, Chris? Is he on the line? He's there. All right, Greg, yesterday you want to take us through your rage and rabid fury and you want to promote your podcast, and I'm sorry we didn't do this yesterday because I was very disappointed. I was hurt yesterday. It stayed with me all night. I had trouble sleeping because you uh, you were so furious. Like me with Ricky Henderson? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I wasn't furious. I was disappointed, and here's why. Because as I, as I told you yesterday, 
you know, the, the reason that I am very, very happy to do the show for free is sort of, you know, it's like one of baseball's unwritten rules. In exchange for me doing the show for free, uh, I get to mention or promote the podcast, the Greg Cody Show podcast, or, or you maybe ask me a question about it. You know, back in the day, uh, you guys used to play a little clip from the podcast, and, and that's not done anymore. So at the very least, maybe a little mention. But that didn't happen yesterday. Well, so well back yeah, back in the day, different. back in the day, you did back in my day. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah, it's a non sequitur. I mean, we're talking about uh, the podcast now. Right? No, no, but, it's uh, back. That, in, that was a sequitur. That was back in the day. The trade. The, the, <laughs> no, the, the, no. The, the he quid, came on to talk about one thing. You're talking about another. You they just gave job, you a free uh, one right now. You did yeah. your yeah, job. We did our job. We, but you don't. You haven't done it back in my day in months. You couldn't have a better toss. As a segue. Yeah, the podcast, uh, it, it's an award-winning one. It's a particularly great Greg Cody wow. Show podcast that I wish everyone would listen to because it's the return of Mount Gregmore. Uh, I, I talk about uh, a Sioux City versus uh, Sioux Falls controversy I got wow. involved in. Mm. Uh, you know, we, we, we talk about our favorite songs from the 90s. Uh. Uh, you know, we have the, the father-son Cody Olympus continues with the best event yet, Speed Grocery Shopping. Ooh. I mean, it's just a... It, it's a really fun episode that I wish people would listen to. And thank you belatedly for letting me talk about it on your beautiful podcast. Thank you. Okay, you can leave now. Uh, thank oh. you for all of your you good work. You can hear how happy here. he is. Well, I mean, yes, he, uh, he's decidedly less angry than he was yesterday. Are we sure we don't want to, Dad, tease the audience? Because when you tell the, what the topic was for Mount Gregmore, everyone's going to want to well, tune th in. This is, it was a very poor tease. This is the thing. He wants us to promote the podcast, but he doesn't know I'm how to hooked. do it. He doesn't know what's interesting. Well, Mount Gregmore's Mount, back, Mount man. Gregmore is his version of Mount Rushmore. Really? It's no, five no, instead of four. Um, Dad, tell yeah. everyone but what this week's... Sioux Falls versus Sioux City. Tell everyone what this week's topic is. Is on speed Mount grocery shopping. Yeah, speed grocery shopping is amazing. I was pulling up my pants in the middle of an aisle. It was Who won? But, um, uh, well, I can't give anything away. It was the closest event we've had yet. Less than one minute separated Christopher's time wow. from mine. Incredible. Have you won and, uh, any events it, yet? You know, have you won any events yet? Because this was going to be your big I winner. I won events, yes. Yes, it's not a shout out. It's only seven to one at this point. Or is it six to one? I can't keep track. But, well, uh, you kind yeah, of just Christmas gave away what happened in the shopping thing. That's so great. Yep. All right, see you later. Oh, uh, good talking to Wait, you. Wait, we didn't so hear about Mount Gregmore. Yeah. yeah. What was the yeah. Mount Gregmore topic? Yeah. Yep. Hey, nice chat. It's the Mount Gregmore of June's. Wow. In favor in, in, in honor of the current month. <laughs> wow. June <laughs> Jones, huh? Cato June. Well, you know, will June Jones make it? Happy June. Tune in and find out. Mm. See you later, Greg. I'm sorry that we yeah. didn't promote your podcast yesterday. Jam-packed episode, okay. huh? It sounds like it. The I'm grocery. Sure the, will you get out of here? <laughs> he had to pull up his pants in the middle of an aisle. I saw that. I, do, I can't believe he was saw it. He was lamenting. Not, with you. He was lamenting not having a belt like it wasn't his fault. It was so great. He's like, I don't have a belt. What do you expect? He like, is Dad, running you did well, this. No, in Greg's defense. That, yeah, no, no, but in Greg's defense, I mean, when you go to play a Major League Baseball game, you're not bringing your own belt. What? Greg Cody went to the grocery store. There was video of him scattered all around the grocery store, and he was running, sort of jogging, and his pants kept falling down, and he did not have a belt, and he was blaming others for him. That could have been the difference in that minute that put he on, lost put, by. Put it on the poll, Guillermo, at Levitard Show. Have you ever blamed anyone else because you weren't wearing a belt? That's a big mistake. You always got to travel with an emergency belt. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's a rookie move. Yeah. Never leave the house without an emergency belt. What kind of belt do you guys go with? Are the you emergency like, belt? No, yeah, like no, just general belts. Do you like the leather belt with the holes? Do you like the belts that are like the fabric and then you have like the clasp that kind of like punches it down with the teeth? You know so what I'm talking I, about? So uh, I like golfing belts actually because yeah. uh, they're stretchy yeah. <laughs> and I needed that after the pandemic. They a give you like belt. a range, like waist 34 to 36. I love a range. I like yeah. that kind of uh yeah. that kind of belt. That I kind still, of range cuz sometimes I am a 34, but other days I'm a 36. I still know? really struggle with the concept of uh shopping for belts yeah. because what's your waist size okay naturally if i pick my waist size they're going to give me a little room for give no that's a sharp 36 yeah. overpriced There's, belts i'd say i think so too yeah especially like i went to a uh, leather these leather belts like uh where was i in texas in austin, austin. no men's warehouse we're gonna get here charleston 
Charleston. I was in Charleston. They had these one of these markets, and there was this leather shop. I was like, I don't have a belt. Let me go buy a belt. It's like sixty five bucks. Well, for that's a belt. the leather, not Get over the belt. Yourself. Yeah, you're paying for the. the yeah, I know, but it, I know it's the that's the most expensive version of a belt. But it's still just get over yourself. I belt. went to you're a belt. I went to Horse Country, uh, that that feed store by the Chuck Wagon oh, yeah. downtown. Wow, is that and Chuck Wagon still there? Yeah, 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 yeah really. Yeah. yeah, and it still looks like a I saw one on Bird. Yeah, CC's Pizza's gone. I love CC's Pizza. Why? Chocolate pizza. Am I right? Ah. Yeah. Uh, Classic. That's a crime. But I, I went to that feed store because uh, I was going to Texas and I wanted to dress up for a cowboy yeah, gag. That's... And uh, I dropped way too much money on trying to look like a cowboy. Huh. Mm. Like, you know, I'm, have you seen the inflation on cowboy boots? Tony Dude. said in the corner here that he never wears a belt. Yeah, that's just... You never, you never wore... What? I you can know. confirm that. I don't know the last time I've worn a belt. All my <laughs> pants fit. Why do I need a belt? Whoa. I don't you've, believe You've this. recently lost weight, though. Yeah, but all my pants fit. You have? Yeah. yeah. He has. Yeah, the more he has. You have does noticed? everything just always work out perfectly for you? No, it's just I wear 34, and like that's what I wear. So Tony, why do I need a belt? How much right. weight have you lost? I'd say 15 pounds. Yeah, what? probably 10. I don't. Yeah. Tennis. Tennis doesn't change. You don't notice that? No. You should compliment him on on losing the weight. Ever since he started playing basketball, then this belt day, thing Tony, is even more bullshit. How could you possibly have lost 15 pounds and your pants still fit you exactly the same with no belt? That's impossible. Yeah, because I wear 34. Wow, you are 34? You can't yeah. lose 15 pounds and have pants yeah, because, fit you the same way. Because my way. waist is the same size. <laughs> so fat. Do you think he's a belt braggart? Do you believe, uh, Billy, what are, you, braggart, what are you right? calling bullshit on here? <laughs> that, <laughs> that, it's, impo- it's an impossibility. You, you can't ever lose with a belt 15 on? pounds. You wear shirts over the over your pants where the belt tucks in their shirt? No one. That's why I okay. can't see the belt. I'm just can, You're guys, still 34 even you, when you were 15 pounds heavier? You guys actually think that you, How? Am I crazy? Well, it depends where you store your weight, Bill. Exactly. Where is your weight stored? Right here in my belly. Mm-hmm. My, my weight my weight store is in my chest and my ass I'm cubing yeah. that way. Mm. But Have you guys ever I need purchased to have, like, have eight you, different size suits right. because I, I fluctuate so wildly? Have you ever purchased like t-shirts? You know they're too small. You like them, but it kind of motivates you to lose weight so you can fit in said t-shirt. I do that with bathing I have suits. so many at home. Yeah, yeah I buy motivation bathing waiting suits. to be worn. Yeah. yeah, don't you wish you could put your weight wherever you wanted? Oh, dude. Oh, oh. wow! I love that game. Let's you know all what? go around the room and reposition our weight. My dick. Oh, I'd sign up for that too. <laughs> yep. That's probably where I'd put it. Mm-hmm. Not even Imagine so a much. Fifty-pound dick. Not to be a braggart, but it's also the most give and most close. So that's where you put yeah. it. You just had that thing dangling there. That's usually where I have the most room. That's the most room to grow. You wanna, Not that I have a small penis, because I definitely don't. You want to carry around in your pelvic area 50 pounds of weight every day? Flaccid. Hell yeah. 50 flaccid, flab pounds of dick. No, you have to be smarter than that. Does you it get want, heavier when it's you, erect? You want a fourth of your body weight to be dick. I think so, because it's a blood rushing. So the blood... I, I think you're underselling exactly. You just want an how anchor. Fifty pounds on your dick is an anchor beneath you from your undercarriage. You want an anchor <laughs> hanging from your waist. I'd say two, right. two additional pounds you're gonna feel. No. Yeah, two yeah. additional pounds you're gonna feel. Mike's what are right you about doing this. With I'm regretting this? what I said. Imagine <laughs> strapping a two. He's wishing he had a big penis. This is very. This is very. No, a heavy one. All of a sudden, heavy I'm one. holding my penis big, around. A, a big. Like penis. I, have, I can't. I can't. It's about just it. heavy. You're yeah. Not big necessarily. We'll go, we'll go to LA Fitness. Would you want it to be bigger or just just heavier? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tie a 45 pound plate around your cock, and we'll see how you feel about that. I want Test you. To, I want you to imagine pulling a fifty testy out. A fifty foot. A fifty pound flounder from the sea. And just hang it from your waist. What terrible decision making by you. So where would you put the, the repositioned weight, Dan? I'm I mean, the only one playing this yeah, game. Yeah, Chris is the only one that went out on that limb for us. I'm going to yep. go triceps. I think legs. I think I'd try and spread it out in yeah, my legs. Yeah, so I have legs. skinny chicken not, not legs. Not at the ankles. Not at the well, ankles. Chris is going for a third leg. Put some of it in my arms. Can I spread it out or I only can put it in one place? I'd, I'd go basically 10 pounds on each tricep and then just continue working. Wow, you just have the rocks arms? Well, yeah, because the tricep is an easy muscle to form, so if you build bulk there, it won't look well, bad. You have to balance out with the bicep, though, right? Yeah, I guess that's like a good So I just have giant arms. So you want human, th- you want thighs for arms. Yeah, I think proportionally that'll look the li- Well, you're going to have a lot of trouble weird? with shirts. You're going to have a lot of trouble with shirts. Yeah, that- but that's all right. I can do that. I do like the idea, of, to get back to Sue's original point, I like having clothes as motivation. It's like I remember when I fit in that shirt. I remember when that fit was just right. That's how I've purchased far too too much Brady merch, and 
<laughs> like, I hate the way my nipples look in one of the shirts. But damn, if every time I put it on, I'm like, man, I got to look better in this shirt rather than doing what I'm doing right now, which is putting a Band-Aid over my nipple. I thought you were going to say soccer jerseys. Soccer oh, jerseys dude. for me are the, the bane of my existence. There's one team that has really cool and stylish kits in Italy called Venezia, and I got a shirt, and they don't sell replicas. They just sell the shirt that footballers wear. So I got a size large not knowing this, and it was unbelievable how tight this shirt is. I need to lose 40 pounds to fit in this shirt. But damn it if I'm not keeping in the closet for really? maybe the one day really? that it'll fit. Wear it tomorrow. Wear it tomorrow. Yeah. No, no, I can't. No, I'm not wearing that. That'd be cool. I can't, wear that. I can't wear that shirt in public. Why? Come on. Come on. I think it'd be no. funny. If we gave you a grid of death punishment that we took off of, if we took off one of your grid of death well. punishment and just you've got to wear the super tight, unflattering shirt. I'm surprised you guys do this because, Chris, this can't be something that you do as a fellow fat guy. You're not buying, you and me are not buying shirts that are extra small because we plan on fitting into them someday. No, 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 no. I'm buying... Bigger shirts. Dave. But how about how about motivational bathing suits? Stugatz is out I here saying yeah. he's I got multiple motivational bathing suits. Yeah, that's as if the there's move. a summer catalog of Stugatz swimwear. I have bathing swimwear. suits. I have T-shirts. They're still waiting to be worn. But uh, I guess it's not working as a form of motivation I, for me. I have some dress shirts in my closet the other that way. I look at and I'm like, someday, man, yeah. we'll get back so to you. No, actually, that that I felt like that I felt like Dan was unfair to me there. That's one of my wow. dress shirts that actually fits me decently. Do well, you? I have a barrel chest, man. What do you want from me? Do you go through shirts very often that instead of still pointing at it and saying yes someday, you're just like nope, and you throw it in a bag for goodwill because yeah. you've decided <laughs> I've gone up ago, a actually. size. I well, will say that yeah. Chris is fairly <laughs> never well getting into that. <laughs> Chris is fairly well proportioned. Hell yeah, I am. Like he doesn't have a he doesn't have a big gut. You know what I mean? Like we say that he's like fat it's Chris or whatever. Bigger. I was no, watching that but, guy. but you have you have a chest where it doesn't stick out that far. I appreciate what you're doing right now. I actually think you're usually I think you're full of shit, but I actually no, I was right uh, no, oh, no to be yeah. no, no to be completely honest with you, that was my takeaway. Like they put out a picture of us at the Marlins game the other day, and I was like, you know, Chris isn't like. You're you're thick, but you you don't have like a big gut. You know what I mean? Should've like quit while you were ahead. Well, no, I'm just saying. Like I was looking at your shirt, and your shirt was tight, but like you have a big chest, and like your arms are decent, but you don't have like a big like pot belly that's sticking out. You know what I mean? Thank like you. I was I was like, look, just guys, please stop talking. No, I'm just saying. Like people say, Fat Chris, and they think, oh my god, this guy's like borderline obese here. I've, look at him. I will admit, I've what been a holly jolly fat guy. That's get, what people say, and I, I'm like, no, no, he's like fairly proportioned. I he has to, done a real good job of getting fat everywhere. Right. I yeah. Used to, I will admit, I it's used to, evenly distributed. You don't need to put right the 50 now. pounds in the wiener. You know I what I mean? I used to get a lot more. You're not that fat. No. I don't yeah. get that as much as I used to. You're well proportioned. I if yeah. you're gonna be fat, be fat everywhere, not fat one place. You know. Debatable. Can we go back to where hope dies on on your hanger, where you go into the closet and you're like, someday, but then you've made the decision. Nope, you're going in a garbage bag, and you're going to Goodwill. Hope has died here. I'm never getting back to where this shirt was when I bought it. You know how I know I'm fat more than just looking at myself naked or eating. I I start holding my cell phone here. On my, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right the table the, tummy. The base yeah. of my yeah. chest Tummy plate, table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But above my belly button, and that, you started doing that a lot more recently. I know. Like, I do that. Out on that behavior. That's not like even my sign. phone. I noticed it the other night. We posted a video. We were at Flanagan's for the game with Tom Havistro, yeah. and my food was arriving, and my placement of my hands was like a fat guy placement. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I, wanted, I, was, I wanted to you tell you, this, I'm like, watch hands, Go back bro. and watch the video that was posted. <laughs> oh, no. well, well, try this. to explain it a little bit. It's kind of like what Mike's saying. It's like that. It's kind of like... Okay, but Mike is Mike is describing... It's kind of like you're resting your elbows on your love handles. No! Yeah, you, you bring your elbows all the way back. You're like T-Rex arms, right? Just yeah. pretend you're a T-Rex. I'm going to pull up the video. And then yeah. try to interlock your fingers. And that's a big sign that you've gained too much weight. That I, I and saw you can't that turn a corner without adjusting your T-shirt. I saw that oh. video. <laughs> I saw that video and was like, all right, we're going to the gym on Monday. I didn't go. I, I'm going today, though. No, I'm going today, Monday. though. Oh. Yeah, Mondays are real fine. busy for Diet me. It starts Monday. Monday's, well, a, Monday's a busy gym it day. It is. It's you don't want to start on a Monday. <laughs> Everyone starts Monday. Yeah, go on a Thursday. That's when everyone's given up for the week. Mm -hmm. Put it on the poll, Guillermo, at Lebetard Show. Do you come out rip-roaring to get a workout in Monday and then miss Monday's workout? <laughs> at Lebetard Show. Mike, I need you to explain a little more for the people who have not seen the video. 
uh, and don't have video for what it is that we're doing right now. They're listening only to what it is you're describing. Where is the telephone? When you say putting out the telephone on your belly, like what? Like a remote control? Bobby Bowden used to talk about when he would take a nap, the Bowdens would famously put the remote control on their belly. This is human evolution. Your body reacts to, oh, now I have a nice little place to position things to help carry the weight of sub. So... You remember how I told you the fat guy hands when you, when you know you're gaining weight is when you do the T-Rex arms, you pull your elbows back as far as you can while interlocking your fingers. So basically you just put a cell phone in that position and boom, you've gained 10 pounds. Yeah, it's now. terrible. I think that you were, I think that you were done a disservice by the height of that table. If everyone could look like in the zoom right now and do your arms it. back from that table, it's a tall table. Yeah, you're fine. It's Wait. really hard to do that and not look overweight. Like, hmm. look yeah. At, Roy, you're, you're skinny. You do that, that positioning with your hands? Uh, uh, just rest your, rest your, close okay. your, yeah. Do T Rex arms? No. Huh. No. He's no, you're, no, his elbows are out. He didn't even listen to a word that I said. Roy told me the other day that he's fat, that he gained 15 pounds. I did. Let's I'm, I'm at 185 now. I hate you. Oh, okay. Well, well, That's uh, so where would you move your fat around to? Uh, that's a good question. I, I, would, I probably would go up in the chest, chest. area. Yeah, yeah. 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 Chest. yeah, my yeah. chest is not that yeah. big, but it is getting bigger. It's, it's yeah. Nice. No, you're not jiggling too much on the bottom. Uh, Chris, are you showing us any jiggle there in the video? Because it's a little murky. It's a little shadowy. I can't totally see what you were doing. It wasn't even your arms, I noticed, as a fellow fat person. I thought you might be self-conscious about the boobery. Well, yeah. That, oh, thank on, you. Man. I mean, yeah. No, that's your boobs easy. are nice. Like... To Billy's point, you do distribute your weight. Yeah, really you're well, well proportioned. I store my I store my weight in my in my chest. Yeah, which is why I'm presently wearing a nipple cover. Yeah, I should wear the nipple covers. Mm -hmm. No, oh, I've upgraded. Oh, oh. Yeah, there's this what? there's this Japanese brand that is just <laughs> straight up tape. I'm putting on my tit. Wait. I heard my wife so the other I've got day. Mr. Nipple, and now I just got. I'm just wearing two. I pants heard my stuff. wife the other day talking to my uh, my brother's girlfriend about like some strapless bra. Oh, She's like, it just covers the nipples, and I was like. In my mind, I didn't say anything out loud because it was embarrassing. <laughs> but in my mind, I was like, I wish I had that link. <laughs> you searched for it later. <laughs>